But that's everything that's happening globally. Let's talk about all of the cues that you should watch as we get into a brand new trading session. We have Sonal as well as Mangalam joining us now to take us through the trade setup this morning. Guys, a very good morning to both of you. Sonal, let me come across to you first. You were just going through the global market setup. Definitely looks quite weak this morning. It does. And I'll repeat that actually in my market setup because uh, we saw that US markets, they opened after Labor Day break and they did not do so well. Dow Jones down 180 points and that is something that is weighing on SJX Nifty also as well we speak. Uh, generally, we saw that 10-year bond yield, that was at the highest level since June. We saw the 30-year yield at the highest level since 2014. So yes, there is some pressure as far as the US markets are concerned. On Wednesday, of course, we'll get the Fed commentary on the current economic conditions of that particular economy known as the Beige Book. So markets are on the edge ahead of that commentary coming in from the Fed as well. ECB policy is also scheduled this week. So any rate hikes, any rate action is something which the global markets will watch out for closely as well. Asian markets right now, because of the handover that we got from the U.S. markets, are in the red, hanging down anywhere between 250 to 300 points. We have Taiwanese index, which is down 250 points. Across the board, there's a lot of selling. And if we look at the SJX Nifty, a 200-point downtick is what the SJX Nifty is indicating. Uh, we have been doing really well, outperforming the other global markets. But today, it looks like we could be in sync. So it is below that support level of 17,500. Dollar overnight surged to above that 110 uh, uh, mark, and non manifest Manufacturing PMI came in at 56.9 in the month of August versus 56.7 in the month of July. Uh as far as our own markets are concerned, yesterday we closed flat after a very volatile session. Mid-cap index, however, outperformed was up around five tenths of a percent, and we saw the advanced decline ratio uh, that was flat. One is to one is what the uh, advanced decline ratio looked like. We have the uh, um, we had FIIs and DIs both net buying in cash markets. Now the support levels is at 17,500, with SJX Nifty indicates could be broken, and on the resistance level, we have 17,750 to watch out for. All right, Sonal, thanks a lot for running us through all of those cues. So we should brace ourselves for a week opening with the SGX down 200 points. But let's see how we go from there. But Sonal, stay on. Also, take us through some of the individual stocks that we should keep on our radar. Oh, yes. So I have a couple of them. Let me start with HAL. They said that they produced the gas turbines power for IAC1 Vikrant. So Cochin Shipyard was in focus. This stock, again, comes in focus on the back of that big launch that we spoke about. Zuari Industries has signed an MOU with Envian International and Zuari Envian to build and operate a biofuel distillery. So that stock remains in focus. Paris Defense has entered into an agreement with Eldis Paradubis, uh, that is in Czech Republic. It is signed to provide turnkey anti-drone systems for civilian airports in India. So more order inflow coming in for Paris Defense. GMM Podler had an analyst meet where the takeaways were quite positive. This is largely baked into the prices, what the analysts say. The FY25 guidance is revenue of 3,700 crore rupees, EBITDA of 630 crore rupees, EBITDA margin at 17%, and the compounded annual growth rate for revenue news is 14%, EBITDA for 24%. They also expect a return on capital employed at the rate of 25%. All right, Sonal, thanks a lot for taking us through that entire list of stocks. We're going to keep our eye out on all of them. Finally, let's also bring Mangala in, and he's looking at all of the queues from the futures and options space. Hi, Mangala. But I'm looking at the one queue that everyone's looking at this morning, and that's the SGX Nifty, down 200 points. So that's telling you there is a fair amount of nervousness. There was a lot of nervousness in yesterday's trading session as well, but for the record books, the Nifty closed flat after a volatile session. But, you know, the volatility was something that uh, wasn't missed. After hitting a high of 17,765, the Nifty went all the way down to 17,587, a near 200-point drop from the highs uh, before recovering to around 17,650 itself. Importantly, you know, if you just take a look at uh, the way uh, the cash market flows came by, we saw both the FIS as well as the DIIs buy. But don't let that number fool you because that could have been an element of, uh, uh, you know, some sort of FII buying in the Sinjin block deal that took place as well. So we had a 1220 crore block deal in Sinjin. What really stood out was the way the Nifty Futures premium collapsed from 44 points to 27 points. And that was telling you there was selling by the FII's in index futures. A thousand crore worth sell figure coming in out there. They unwound 4600 longs, added close around 6500 shots. And remember, we were talking about how the FII longs inched up from 19% to 21%. Well, they've gone back to 19% with 81% of their positions on the short side. And that's not all. Even in options, the FII sold 67,000 calls. They're telling you there would be a fair amount of hurdles on the way up. 
whereas they unwound 18,000 short puts and the SGX Nifty does indicate that. Where have they written those calls? 17,700 as well as 17,800, whereas the 17,600 put writers yesterday ran for cover and we did see the 17,500 put writers being extremely active for a premium of around 50 odd rupees. So now that the SGX Nifty is opening 200 points lower, right in the zone of that 17,450 to 17,500. Let's see whether there could be support or not because there also is the 17,496 mark which is the 20-day 20, 20 exponential moving average. So that is an important support. But on the way up, we have retraced from levels upwards of 17,700 three times in the last three weeks, be it August 25th, August 30th or September 6th. So that continues to be a bit of a resistance zone. All right, we're going to watch out for all of these cues. Mangalam Sonal, thanks a lot for joining us and prepping us up for this trading session. With that, it's time for our first short break on the show. But up next, the Roads and Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari says that seat belts will be made compulsory for all passengers and cars, including those sitting in the rear. More on that story when we come back.